All right, so let's take another look at uh, at our container of shapes. And once again, just trying to make sure that we are um, uh, considering what happens in, in, in memory uh, when this program executes. So <clears throat> I could have just constructed my vector, right? So we have uh, in our header file, we have uh, uh, shape, uh, cl uh, we have class shape, class uh, circle, class uh, rectangle. We have these these things in our uh, in our header file, right? So uh, we could have just constructed a vector of uh, of pointers to shapes, shape pointer. Right? We could have constructed this vector. But the problem with this uh, simplified version of the vector is that the vector is populated simply with pointers to shapes. Right? Pointers to shapes are populated. So these are pointers to, uh, to our objects. And of course, each object is a different, uh, different type. It can be a circle. It can be a rectangle. Uh, it can be uh, some other object like rectangle, uh, but all of them have a shape inside, right? So all of them have this uh, this shape uh, inside the uh, the container, and that's what it makes possible to populate a vector with pointers to a shape when we have a a circle, a rectangle, and a triangle, or whatever uh, whatever other shapes we have. So it's really the presence of the shape part in every part, in every type of shape that we can create uh, uh, is what it makes uh, possible. However, the uh, the problematic um, uh, part of it is that when you populate this vector of shapes with objects that are allocated dynamically, right? If if every single object of these was populated by new, right? If we said new new, new, if we populated everything by new. In that case, the problem is that when this vector is going out of scope, these objects aren't. They remain um, in memory and they essentially, we no longer have any connections to them and they allocate this memory and we have a memory leak. So we said in Java, the answer is that once you have no references to objects that you created, garbage collector of Java Virtual Machine will, simp will simply find these objects and delete them for you. So you don't have to worry about anything. You just create your objects in Java and they will be, uh, they will be eliminated as soon as uh, uh, the Java Virtual Machine decides that no longer ever uh, can access them anymore. Therefore, they should be destroyed. So, uh, the answer to the same problem um, in, um, a, in C++, that instead of creating vector of shapes, we basically create a, a vector of unique, uh, unique uh, PTR, unique pointer to shape uh, type of object, right? And when we do this, instead of shape, naked shape pointer. When we do this, when we populate our vector, right, so we have our vector object, which is populated by unique pointer uh, elements like this, right? So we have, we, we say we inserted three of them. Now the naked pointers are actually wrapped inside these objects, right? So we still have naked pointers uh, pointing to the object that we create as new, but then when the constructor for vector begins to execute, right? So when all of a sudden when this this object when this object goes out of scope, what happens is that the destructor for every single unique pointer object is also invoked, right? So the, the destructor call uh, uh, the destructor. Uh, is invoked for every single one of them. And guess what destructor of single one of them does? It says delete. Delete, 
delete, delete. Uh, so before these guys are destroyed, uh, actually what happens that these objects are uh, eliminated by the corresponding call to the delete. And we, uh, and we effectively free up memory and then these guys can be destroyed and no longer we have a memory leak, right? So everything is uh, deallocated properly uh, when we actually switch over to use uh, something that like this unique pointer uh, type of uh, class to wrap up naked pointers um, inside these little boxes that are smart enough to delete uh, the objects from memory. That elimin eliminates a memory leak. Okay, so just wanted to make sure that we uh, take another look at this, uh, uh, you know, unique pointer uh, uh, wrapper. So unfortunately, the syntax is is a little like you know is is a little uh, longer with all of this, but uh, I think it's quite manageable as long as uh, uh, we understand what's going on. And oftentimes, this uh, the series of uh, calls to a new operator. Uh, can be wrapped in the in the uh, uh, in a single function that actually takes the type uh, of the desired object, takes the right set of parameters, and simply creates the correct uh, type of object. Uh, okay, so that is um, definitely um, an important uh, part of our consideration for for what this uh, program demonstrates. Uh, the next thing that I would like to, uh, uh, to show you with respect to this specific example is that, by the way, my comment here needs to be fixed. It's, it's the tail of the rectangle. Uh, but um, uh, another, um, another demonstration is that, well, first of all, the, if, if, we, if, if we want to consider the uh, class hierarchy here, Right, our, 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 the hierarchy of classes that we're using is that, of course, uh, we're using this um, uh, shape class, uh, shape, right, which is uh, which only has virtual. If you look at at the code for it, shape only has get area. Really, that's the only uh, really interesting part of shape uh, that is capable of delegating the calls. To the correct uh, type of object, right? So uh, get area, get area is right here, right? And then we have a circle and a rectangle uh, classes right here, right? Uh, which have their own data and uh, and set of functions, uh, but we say that they derive from the shape, right? And this is the notation that we use. Uh, when we do the diagramming. But if I wanted to also have uh, a type of, uh, just another uh, type of object named square, kind of silly idea, but nevertheless, uh, class, another shape that's called square, right? Square is uh, similar uh, to the rectangle, right? So square is similar to the rectangle. So I can actually say that it public uh, publicly derives from the rectangle. So this uh, square kind of demonstrates that you can actually further extend the hierarchy of your objects. And I think the only thing that needs to change here that we say that public uh, constructor for square, right? Public constructor for the square, uh, square. Uh, take only um, uh, just uh, one side, right? So double, double side. It doesn't need uh, two separate width and height. It, it'll it be or should be happy with just uh, one side. So if um, we want to provide this type of convenience to the user, all we can do or, or what we can do is actually use, uh, 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 use uh, uh, we need to specify that square, when square is constructed, now remember that if, if now I say that square 
uh, square is another class that I would like to have, it actually derives itself from the rectangle. So at design time, I am trying to work on all of these classes separately, but of course at, at the runtime, if I say square, square SQ, right, and, and specify that the side should be like uh, 3.0, Right? and create an object uh, populating it th with this type of site. What happens is that the square is this, right? It's, it's an actual object that takes uh, space and memory. Inside square, I have the rectangle because recta we derive from rectangle, right? So we, we definitely, uh, we say that square derives itself from rectangle. So therefore, right, rectangle is is sitting inside of square, and everything that comes with the rectangle is actually inherited uh, by the square. And of course, inside the rectangle, everything that uh, the shape has is also uh, is, is sitting in, inside. So therefore, the shape is located inside this rectangle. So this is the type of object that the square is when uh, it is created at runtime. Right? So therefore, if that's the case, it's important that when square constructor is invoked, right? So when we just construct the square uh, object named SQ or whatever its name is, what needs to happen is that we, needs to be, we need to be able to say that we want to construct the inner object and we need to be able to control creation of the inner object, which is the rectangle. This can be done by using initializer list, and we say rectangle, right? We want to construct the rectangle inside the square by saying take side twice, right? Side and side. Uh, uh, take, uh, uh, take this uh, type of uh, 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 construction and basically we can tell the compiler that when the square constructor is invoked we can use the initializer list to tell the compiler that once the square is being constructed we want to invoke this constructor for the rectangle because we know that the rectangle is sitting inside the square because we said that we want to extend the idea of the rectangle by deriving square from the rectangle, which simply is the type of rectangle which uses the same uh, size for both width and height. So therefore, let's let's put this to test, right? So we can essentially, oh, we can say, all right, we now have new type of object, and this is a square, right? Square square, and we can specify whatever the side is, like 3.3, .3, something like that, right? So we can essentially, uh, uh, you see how uh, we spend some time uh, early on to organize this, this hierarchy of classes, right? Just so that we have uh, basically, uh, we decided that we need this uh, uh, high level shape, which, uh, uh, which specify essentially a set of operations uh, which will be available on all of these objects. Then we have the circle, we have the rectangle, and later on we decided to have a square. And uh, was it hard to add square to the system? I don't think so. It, I think it was extremely easy because we're just building on the on top of the concepts and the hierarchy with, that we already have in place, right? So we go here and let's put this to test, right? So we need to be able to compute this total area using the uh, uh, all the code that we already have. So let me try building this, uh, and it was it it gets unhappy about something. So let me just save you. Uh, so what's going on? And the error that I'm getting is uh, expected primary expression before talking. Okay, so and I think it it is simply because I because the because my project doesn't know that shapes is part of it, it doesn't automatically save it. So I, if I press Control S to save the shapes, it should then fix my silly uh, problem here. 
right so there so there we go so so now if I go back to actually uh, try running it uh, it uh, just like you know does whatever it does to compute the the areas and do all these uh, uh, additions and hopefully uh, everything is fine okay so uh, so this is uh, the demo that uh, basically adds on top of what we have done yet another example where we uh, where we uh, can derive uh, where we can extend our hierarchy by deriving square not directly from the shape but actually from already existing uh, derived class such as rectangle right and uh, as long as it makes sense we can uh, we can validate this by the way is that every single connection like this we can verify by uh, by checking uh, whether it makes sense to say uh, square square is a right so is a type of rectangle right so uh, if that makes sense, it makes sense to construct our hierarchy like this. But you know, if all of a sudden I decided to derive square from a circle, then we can validate this decision by saying square is a type of circle, and that should basically become a stop sign that says, no, that doesn't sound right. Uh, it probably doesn't and shouldn't be constructed and organized like that. But as long as uh, we say that, and remember, when we say is a type of uh, uh, like this, it means that everything that rectangle is, square becomes. Because remember, at runtime, this rectangle, uh, uh, rectangle object becomes simply part of the, of the square, right? It's physically is embedded inside the, the square object. So when this physically uh, is allocating memory, that is, that is part of it.